it's Miss Lady Petal here. I know I didn't release the vlog last week and I'm sorry about that. I was waiting for my chicken pictures to come back from the printers and guess what? Today they have. So now I have my chicken cards and for all of those who have pre-ordered off my Etsy store I have sent all your orders out today so I just wanted you to let you know that your chicken cards are in the mail so here's a preview of what they look like so first we have let me just pop up first we have Henrietta Henrietta is a gorgeous little mum to be. She hasn't had any chicks yet and she's just a sweet, gorgeous little personality. She's five dollars. She buys one chicken for a widow in India. On the back she has a lovely saying and she tells you how many chickens you buy. She's gorgeous. So you can see roughly how big these cards are. They're only small. But that's the perfect thing to put as a gift tag. You can imagine these in a card or a gift tag. And you know that whoever receives that knows that they've been responsible, the recipient of a gift of one chicken for a widow in India. We then have Gracie. Whoop, there she is. Gracie. And Gracie's a little bit of a princess and a diva. She's a little bit hard to handle and she has a lot of bling on her and instead of a bandana she has a ribbon because she's such a pretty girl <laughs> again on the back and you flip these over otherwise they'll look a little bit she actually buys two chickens if I put the wrong chicken and she buys one chicken she actually says she buys two but she actually buys one Sometimes we have printing errors. <laughs> but every $5 that is spent on any chicken product in my Etsy store during this whole Chickens for Charity project, that gets one chicken for a widow in India. I'm donating 100% of the proceeds from the whole project. So if you buy prints, if you buy the original paintings, you just divide that by five and you know exactly how many chickens you're getting <laughs> for widows in India. So... <clears throat> We then have Penelope. Penelope is a lovely, yummy mummy. She has, let me just put her up there, three little babies at her feet. And she's a gorgeous young mum. Again, there's a saying on the back, and she buys you two chickens. She's $10. So the first two were $5. Penelope is $10. And last but not least, not least at all, we have Boris. Boris is a rooster. He's looking a little bit confused and henpecked <laughs> because with you know a little diva and young chickens lying around running around his feet you can understand why he would be so darn confused. Again there is a saying on the back and he's ten dollars so he buys you two chickens. There you go. <laughs> so all of these little cards today have been dispatched to the people who've already bought them. If you're thinking of buying them, the link to my Etsy store will be going on the bottom of this vlog almost for the entire time and the link for it will be in the description right at the top so that it's easy for you to, to find link to this video. I also have a blog on www.missladypedal.com and that blog post with those Etsy links are in there as well and my Facebook page Miss Lady Petal Creations if you find me on Facebook you'll find that that is a pinned post and when you click on that link it will take you straight to the Etsy store so that you can have a look at these chicken products um, just also I just wanted to show you because the reason I didn't do my vlog was I actually got my beautiful pictures from the original paintings back from the framers. Now these particular paintings they've all been framed the same so Gracie and we have Penelope and these are the, the original. They're also the size of the full prints so if you were to get a full print you could frame it and it would look like this. Henrietta and of course they don't have their names on them because I added that in later but what you will get if you buy these originals is you they 
they will have a sticker on the back telling you how many chickens you've bought and the name of the chicken. On the prints, that'll be printed on the back of the print because they'll be limited edition prints. And there's Boris. Very, very cute. These originals are available for $120 each. I prefer domestic Australian domestic postage if we can get it. If you want to buy uh, buy one of these original prints, it means that you're you're buying 24 chickens for widows in it. India, one of these original paintings, sorry, will buy 24 chickens. So you will buy two villages worth in India, two whole villages worth of chickens because that's roughly how many would go for two villages. So that's just amazing. Um, I will have to calculate international postage and I just want to say international postage from Australia is going up by 5.7% from the 6th of October. So from the 6th of October, um, my normal letters that cost me $2.60 will cost me $2.75 and any um, parcels or large letters that are under 500 grams will cost me um, $17.95. Anything over 500 grams that's when it's going to be negotiable. These are definitely over 500 grams. The prints, however, are under 500 grams. And they get mailed, they get rolled up in a sleeve and put into a mailing tube and they come out to you so that they can't be uh, bent and they can't be creased. So they're just up in a roll. So when you get them, they'll be curly and you'll need to unroll them. Those prints are $27.50 each. I'm only printing them as they come in and there's only 20 available per chicken. Once they're gone, they're gone. This is a limited edition uh, prints for this particular project only. So once those are all gone, they're gone. So if you want to print, make sure that you put your order in. Um, I'm actually closing this whole auction off at the end of November. So this only goes from right now until the end of November, right at the end of November, because we are uh, uh, organising people to actually go and deliver money to widows in India in December. So that's the way it goes. Um, this is a personal project of mine. So I have links to a wonderful charitable organisation that goes into India and they go in and they help out the widows in India. They help them out with blankets, they help them out with saris and this year we're doing chickens. And I have a particular passion for helping um, people that can't help themselves to have a step up to become a little bit more independent because that's what chickens do for these widows. They get a couple of chickens, they initially get the protein from the eggs but then they let those chickens go broody. There are roosters that run around and if there aren't one of the things that we do is we buy a roost to make sure that they can have babies and then they keep some of the chicks, grow them up and increase their flock and they sell some of the chicks and they get a lot of money for those. So it's really a good venture for poor widows that are really ostracized. There's also a link to an article. If you want to know more about the widow, the plight of 4.1 million widows in India, there is a link at the bottom of this YouTube video that shows you that that takes you there. And you can have a look at the plight of widows in India and there's so many of them that just have the most, I don't know, they're sad and they're, they're, their lives are just nothing like what they were bef before their husbands died. And once their husband died, they've got, they're like in a lower caste in society, they're often evicted from their homes and they become penniless and destitute just because their husband died. And it, and it, it you know, 4.1 million people just in the one country, suffering from that alone. It's so sad. So I'm pleased by a chicken cart. I am definitely really, really engaged in this particular project. I painted all of those chickens, designed them, and I'm making them freely available for anyone that wants to buy a chicken. So the middle two, they're $5 each. These two, Boris and Penelope, they're $10 each. So five, ten. The set is 30. A, a lot of you have already bought the set. And um, that buys six chickens. If you buy a print, it's five chickens. Um, so I, I just, 
they're gorgeous little chickens and every I donate the proceeds of all the sales of these little items 100% of the proceeds they actually go because each chicken costs about five dollars Australian to buy in India and they have to be negotiated individually so every every five dollars a hundred percent of it goes everything all the production costs everything the printing everything I've borne that that's part of my donation to this project so just so you know that I'm not taking any of the profits uh, the postage on these items is 70 cents for Australia um, even if you, you buy four or multiple ones you know like they won't go over 50 grams and they just get posted out in these little business envelopes with my sticker on the back. Um, I am only putting the, the cards into envelopes and sending them out. But they're all going out today. So whenever you make an order now, they'll go out within one or two days of you making that order on my Etsy store. So that's an exciting thing. Uh, what else have I been doing for the last two weeks? Because I didn't do a vlog last week. So this one will probably just be that a little bit longer. Just a little bit. <laughs> Apart from working on that chicken project and getting all the design stuff done for the sayings and all the words and designing all the cards and ordering the prints and framing and all that, I've been doing lots of letter journals and so I'm having a great time with the mentors. So whenever you join a letter journal group now, there is a mentor. And that mentor is like the leader of the group. And they have been involved in at least two letter journal swaps previously. And not only have they been involved in them, they've shown some sort of leadership quality in that. The journals have all been done correctly and there's been no mistakes made. And they have a really thorough understanding of all the rules and principles of letter journals and exactly what the spirit of the whole project is all about. So, I have... Um, I just think these women are amazing. <laughs> I'm so proud of them. Uh, and look, we've had a couple so far and they are going swimmingly well. They've already set up awesome chat groups and they are answering all the questions and being really proactive about their leadership roles and, and I just think that's amazing because my yeah, this project is getting really really big at the moment I'm formulating group 37 so 37 times 4 let alone all the private swaps that are out there um, it's getting too big for just one person to administer so I'm looking for experienced letter journal partners that become mentors to then have a group that's like self-determining and you don't need to come to me all the time because I create a lot of resources for everybody to be there to be there all the time seven days a week 24 hours a day no matter in where in the world you are you can see me teaching you about letter journals so that means that I'm able to concentrate more on my art <laughs> and my businesses <laughs> and doing charity projects like what I'm doing at the moment and all my other things that I'm doing so that's what I'm doing there and it's working really really well along with the checklist the checklist kind of says everything that I've said in every video in a really succinct one page checklist and if you follow all of that you can't help but do it right so as long as you follow it you'll do it right <laughs> great <laughs> um, I've been working on some paintings so I have well you can see the one behind me there you go so this one really that's just for my son so he wanted a character of Pokemon called Nine Tails, and so I just started painting him in this morning it's like a kind of a fox with nine tails and I'm called a gorgeous bushy tails and so I'm just just doing the underpainting for him at the moment and one thing that I want to say with all of that um, and my son like you know he's a real Pokemon freak so you know <laughs> yeah I don't normally go in and do this kind of thing but he specifically asked as part of his birthday present that I would paint him one so his birthday was in July and I've had a lot of things on since then so now I'm doing it now <laughs> um, and I said to him, why do you want a Pokemon painting? He said, well, when I don't want it anymore, but I'm a gamer, so, you know, I'll always like it. Uh, my kids can have it. And I'm like, cool. 
I guess. <laughs> he's already got a huge big graffiti painting in his room that I did for him. And now he's got that. He's got no more wall space left. <laughs> so, And I'm having tea, but it's like mid-morning tea. <laughs> it's not afternoon. Maybe by the time I get this on YouTube, it's about afternoon tea. <laughs> there we go. And the bigger the mug, the better. And insulated so it lasts hotter longer. Um, the other painting I'm working on at the moment, and this is nowhere near finished, is this beautiful nude that I'm doing. And this was based on a, a reference photo that my husband took of a, a beautiful sculpture in the middle of Brisbane City. And the moment, and you know, because he's a painter, right? And I'd never painted a nude, but the moment I saw that photograph, I said to him, I want to paint that. And at that time, that was back in May, and I didn't have the confidence with that particular technique to, to try it. But you know what? You grow. And I've learned a lot about not painting in flesh tones and using different hots and colds and um, thank you very much to Gina Ahrens. I mean she's a fabulous teacher of that particular technique and I'm taking it and running with it. And I was talking to my dad who's a painter and the other night and we were arguing about it. You know he's saying she looks beautiful but I think there's something wonky about her. And I haven't taken any life drawing lessons you know where you get in a group of people and there's live nude models there and they hold a pose and you do it you know in various stages it's something that I know where there are a couple of groups and I really want to do at some point but I haven't done it yet so she's just off a reference and in fact I didn't even see the sculpture because I was in another part of the city because I was running around taking reference photos for doing doodle borders and for my reference art journal so I that was a day where you know it was Mother's Day and they said what do you want to do and I said I want to photograph as many reference pictures as possible because I don't come into the CBD and just run around with the camera very regularly at all and it's a Sunday so it's not too busy so I can do that and um, I'm still using those images now they're great <laughs> but I I put um, and I know Jean has done some kind of a thing before on auto painter but it's an app on your iPhone and they've got auto painter one two and three and they're really only for the you can get auto painter for one for the iPad but not two and three I don't think I know I have all three on my iPhone and they're all different techniques and what they do is you load a photo up into it and then you choose a particular style and then it starts to render it into that style as a painting and you can take photographs of each step of that process. So you can stop the, pr the render process, take an image of it, that gets saved to your pictures. And then you can have these reference photos. So if you really want to do something that's different, but you're having trouble kind of, or you're learning to interpret a picture and, not, and you don't want to paint it realistically, or you don't know how to go about painting the underpainting and the layers and all that's involved in creating something that's got real depth there so I you know have learned a lot of those things this year and that's been really really cool so now I'm doing my first nude and yeah she's from the back and a few people who have seen her so far go well she's got no breasts you know you're not going to sell her and I went no but she's got beautiful clean lines and a nice butt so <laughs> And that's what my dad said and he's done life drawing classes and he kind of said you know you just don't need to take note of if you position your head that way one of these shoulders just tends to drop if you go that way and then turn your head your shoulders just naturally drop and if you don't observe that in real life then you don't get a sense of the perspective of that when you're actually doing nudes or the human body or positioning people's bodies and the way that shoulders drop and, and arms move out and the way that if we cross our legs our, our bodies twist you know that kind of thing so that was really really interesting and um, dad was able to give me a few little tips you know I, I curved out her spine a bit and I dropped a shoulder a bit you know and she's looking the more I look at her and think about her she's looking better and better and you know for your dad because I love my dad but for my dad my dad reckons she's she's probably the best one of the best things I've, I've ever done and that's a lot saying from him because dad doesn't give praise lightly so when I get it I feel really woo. <laughs> 
and so but he did he did say peter but you can stuff her up from here don't do it <laughs> so, so i'm not but he reckons i would sell her in a in a flash because she's just really got beautiful lines lovely curves and the shading kind of looks he's you know getting there as i work on it and gradually think about it those kinds of paintings you know when you are really established artist and you're used to doing nudes and things like that well then you can whip them out faster but for me at the moment when i'm that's my first um i'm thinking about it and the more i think about it the more i consider it and i polish it and she'll just end up lovely but she's in, but she's for me <laughs> she's really for me <laughs> And it's not even, she's, I can show her here on this vlog and I can show her on Miss Lady Petal Creations, but for those of you on KIF, she won't get posted there because there's no nudity. Even though she's beautiful, there's no nudity on there because we have younger people that come and it's just part of the rules of the site. So if you really want to see what that finished painting looks like, I'll do a blog on her. She'll go up on my Pinterest paintings board and she'll be on my Miss Lady Petal Creations Facebook page when she's finished. I'm taking my time with her. It's been a couple of weeks so far and I don't paint something on her every day um, when I'm really feeling it. Sometimes with those kinds of paintings, I've got to feel it. I've got to be in the mood and feel it. And see, yesterday I was a bit, um, I was a bit sad. There were some things that went on that um, were really hard for me to handle. I, um, in some of my Etsy, ad, uh, Etsy ads, I had um, written them in such a way that I may have um, caused some problems for some people and um, for their safety, you know. And I was unaware of that and it really distressed me. And now they, they're all fixed. Everything's fixed. The auctions are fine. I'm, I'm redoing everything. <laughs> but that made me feel really, really distressed for a while. And I'm sharing this with you because stuff happens in your life as an artist and sometimes you have the best of intentions and it doesn't always go exactly as you want it now i'm fortunate for me that someone who knew what was going on had a look because they wanted to buy chicken cards had a look gave me a call and said peter you've got to take some of the wording out of your ads and and they and it was great it was great and i thank them very much because they really helped me out there so that was really cool but i spent a lot of part of the day really dwelling heavily on hoping that i had not uh, done something to hurt someone or I hadn't done something to compromise good work that we're doing to be able to help widows in india you know so yeah i just it was tough and so, on days like that, you can either let your art dry up or you can push through it. So, I sat there yesterday afternoon and thought, okay, what am I going to do? I've sorted everything out. I'm feeling sad. I haven't quite got over, you know, the, the, the emotion of the day yet. And I thought to myself, I'm going to paint. And I pulled out that, that canvas there and thought to myself, yeah, that's simple, you know. So I drew out, drew out the, you know, the nine tails for my boy and covered it over with clear gesso. So one thing, that background there is done like one of my graffiti canvases. And I use a um, enamel sprays on the background that really seals it gives it a nice kind of bit of a gloss and you're really hard wearing but then if you're thinking of painting over that will it peel off can you scratch the paint off because it's a glossy surface depends on how thickly you spray because it will soak into the canvas there will usually be some tooth left in that canvas if you're very very heavy with that spray we do a number of coats it can be really cover up the tooth of the canvas and be quite glossy so I decided after I had uh, pencil drawn and sketched that image onto that canvas and of course got my son's approval that it was an okay drawing and he was happy with that <laughs> as you do because he's my customer <laughs> um, 
I put I coated it in some clear gesso so I know I was um, doing what was I doing recently I did a video recently where I was using transparent gesso and I put it in my thing so I've got transparent gesso and Liquitex uh, and I said that when I got them I would do a comparison so let me get the transparent gesso out it's actually really quite gritty and of course you know I've been working on lots of paintings and letter journals so trying to actually find this on the mess that is my workbench right now is difficult the transparent gesso is by Matisse though so and it is here because I've just recently used it here it is oh, sitting right behind me you probably knew the whole time I was looking for that where that was uh, so I I went to my local art store to buy this and they didn't have it they had every other Liquitex product and I mean every medium known to man that Liquitex has they had that the only thing they didn't have was clear gesso but they had this and this is Matisse transparent gesso now it's really 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 similar and they don't say that it's clear they say that it's translucent so you can see through it but it is essentially clear they're very very similar in the way they look when they're finished the only difference is that the grit in this is heavier and and bigger than the grit in that that's the clear gesso from Liquitex I have both now there if you're going to use this is really commonly used in magazine collage now quite often in magazine collage I know for me I start off using neo colors because it's easier to kind of blend and draw those features in because um, I always like to draw before I paint it's rare that I just paint um, that nude for instance I did not draw I just painted so that's why I'm probably really proud about it because I didn't draw her and that's out of my comfort zone for me um, and I'm creating a new comfort zone maybe who cares uh, so I use this over some magazine collage on a journal page and it ripped my neo colors up really darn fast because if it's very very gritty like sandpaper it's going to rip your neo colors up and it's also going to be harder for you to jiggle your paintbrushes in to actually get in between the tooth and this is much 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 finer and even so in this painting I can really feel the tooth of it and I still have to sometimes use a circular motion like you're only seeing the undercover layers at the moment so no any finish just blocking in some color and getting some of the features and shading the under shading done so but I use this one on that canvas and that was really really good but I could have used that as well on the canvas because I'm just using thick paint acrylic paint over the top so that would have been fine on the canvas as well this is much much better the clear gesso here much much better for mag journal pages and magazine collage in general if you're wanting to paint over something so if you've got something you've got collage that's really glossy like magazine collage and you've sealed it then you want to maybe put some clear gesso over that so that that will help you out um, to have tooth and so that you won't be able to scratch the paint off that glossy magazine collage and so having done a little bit of that lately it's the lessons we learn I mean I had resisted getting clear gesso for quite some time and when I went to do that project I realized after doing one and it not working that I could not finish that project without the clear gesso because the magazine that I had used was so glossy and it didn't matter if I paint the matte medium beaded on the top of it so it was really really glossy and the only thing that would go over it was clear gesso so when you've got very glossy things clear gesso gives you tooth then to be able to layer on top of it which is really good um, so that's my comparison done for that yeah so the uh, I've got to get back into my journaling crazy island style I've got October to do it's exciting 
me like Gina I'm also working on a secret project that we won't release until next year so that's exciting stay tuned for journaling crazy island style and remember buy a chicken cart that's my big thing at the moment because and think about it this way on using your art for good personally I could maybe donate a hundred dollars maybe not all the time I've got lots of birthdays on today it's my husband's birthday and yesterday it was my son's birthday so right now no I actually couldn't donate very much maybe five ten dollars there you go but as an artist I can sit down and draw and paint some chickens then for a very moderate cost I can get those made into cards and it takes a little bit of my time and a little bit of my skill and my talent and once I've done that I have the potential to multiply the amount of money that I can bring in for this project and I think to you you know think think to yourself okay I used to think before I started doing art very seriously I used to think that art was selfish and that people didn't appreciate you until you were dead like the you know really kind of immature but that's how I thought and then I had some kind of epiphany probably last year where people started getting really touched by my art now that it made a difference in their lives to the degree that they would pay me money for it now and that it blessed them so much and I thought to myself okay how can I do this so that I can use my talent for good I can do it for the love of it as well because you always want to do stuff for yourself and you've got to be able to experiment and grow otherwise you'll never become a great artist I mean I'm by no means a master at all at anything because I like so many things and that's one of my things I'm a jack of all trades so I do lots of different things but I know that I can use my talents for good so I can use it to bless people and crazy island family and those that see my art and it speaks to them I can give things as gifts to bless people and use my art that way I can sell my art make some money make sure I'm stocked up on the products I need that I can produce it I can teach and I have a workshop coming up on the 11th of October so if you're local in the southeast Queensland corridor or northern New South Wales then I have a workshop at Calvary Family Church that's just the venue on the 11th of October between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. that's four hours in four hours we will create a gratitude canvas and I'm actually going to do a YouTube thing advertising that probably in the next week or two to show you what you can do but and that means that I need to make some more because I've sold all my gratitude canvases bar one and she always sits on my wall there because she just reminds me you know reminds me I have to walk this gratitude walk and it's not a cliche walk that I walk it's a real gratitude walk where you really start thinking about what is it from the glass that's half full rather than half empty and you can choose to be above that or be below it and that determines your attitude to things so yeah that that's kind of where I'm at and this has got to be the longest vlog I think I've ever done but I've been doing look like, that's two weeks in one so you, you know you've got a double dose of me this week but that's exciting isn't it that we can use our art for good that we can make a difference in the world one person at a time I just think to myself my goal with this chicken project is to raise between two and five thousand dollars depending on how many cards I sell and prints I can always print more cards so my cards are unlimited the prints are limited and think about what one person that painted four chicken pictures might be able to achieve here so I could probably donate right now between you know five and twenty dollars and my goal is between two thousand and five thousand dollars and divide that by five and see how many chickens that buys for widows in India 
There's 4.1 million of them. It won't even make a dent, not even a drop. But every little bit helps. And I'm all for making a difference one act of kindness at a time. And I tell you what, those widows won't know it came from you or me. They won't know it. They'll just get given it and they won't know where it came from. And I'm really okay with that. And I can't wait to see that money at work. I can't. I can't wait. <laughs> so I, um, I implore you to do something good today. So normally I say, learn something new. It keeps you young. I'm going to say, do something good for, you, for somebody else today. Because doing good for somebody else makes you feel good. And I think it keeps us younger. And it keeps us grateful. And it keeps us grounded. So ciao for now from Miss Lady Petal. Have a great day.